Good morning and welcome back to London and welcome back to another Porsche Cooled podcast. Uh, my name is Michael Bath and today we're going to talk about the 996 911. So I guess uh, I guess before we even start talking about whether it's time to buy a uh, Porsche 996, Porsche Type 996, uh, I guess <clears throat> there could be some of you who don't even know what a 996 is. Uh, the Porsche 996 is a 911. Uh, it's a 911 model, and it was manufactured uh, from 1997 to, well, it really was manufactured to 2006. Uh, it was replaced by the 997, the Type 997, uh, in 2004. But the Turbo S, I think it was, the Turbo S, the GT2, and the GT3, uh, those variants, they remained in production until around 2006. So I guess you could say the 996 model was from 1997 to 2006, but the 997 was introduced in 2004. The 996, uh, its development, it shared a lot in common with the, um, with the Boxster. Uh, the Boxster was a new model at the time. Um, it was it was developed alongside the 996. Uh, it shared parts from the 996. Um, so there are a lot of similarities. And one of the main similarities, I guess, were the headlights. Uh, and in the beginning, the headlights um, weren't really well received on the 996, the fried egg headlights. And a lot of owners were a little bit annoyed when they bought a Carrera uh, because I guess they spent more money than people who were buying a Boxster at the time, that their headlights uh, looked exactly the same as the Boxsters. Uh, so Porsche did actually rectify that and they changed the headlights to match the, um, the Turbo Models headlights in around 2002, I think it was. Uh, but the headlights were always a point of controversy with the 996. Some people are still, a lot of people still hate them. Uh, I think time has been quite good to them and I think now they're not as... They're not as bad as what people thought at the time, but they were they were far removed from the 993 headlights, from the classic sort of Porsche air-cooled looking headlights, uh, which the 997, I guess, went back to that 993 look, and it's kind of stayed that way ever since. The, I guess if you don't know much about a 996, the 996-911 was, 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 I guess, revolutionary in a way uh, because it, it, it featured... Well, it marked the most significant change for Porsche from their classic 911, from their now classic 911, the air-cooled 911. Uh, they changed the 996, and 996 was a water-cooled engine. Uh, so not only the interior changed, which was also quite controversial, the in interior changed, but the engine changed to a, a water-cooled engine. Uh, and air-cooled was, I guess, no more. Um, as we know today, air-cooled uh, 911s, air-cooled Porsches, are very sought after and very very collectible and the 996 was the was the first 911 to use the water cooled engine i think when you read things and the things that i've read online about why porsche did this i guess it was due to regulations it was due to emissions it was due to environmental concerns all those things that you know makes porsche and makes any car manufacturer keep moving forward um, maybe I think as well was the fact that they just couldn't get any more power from the air-cooled unit, so they changed to a water-cooled unit uh, for for performance, I guess, for performance and to keep ahead of their to keep ahead of their competition. So just going back to the um, just going back to the 996 headlights, um, it is it is quite unique, I think, that there was so much there was so much hate for these headlights that Porsche actually did. Uh, redesigned them reasonably quickly, I guess. I mean, I'm, I guess it's not that quickly because it was 97 when the 996 came out and I think they redesigned the headlamps in around 2000, the 2002 model when they upped the power of the engine. Uh, and like I said, they became like the turbo the turbo headlamps. Um, but the fried egg headlamps, and I didn't know this and I had to read this before this podcast, that the fried egg, let's call them, shaped headlights, they were traced back to the, um, they were based on the heritage of the GT1 race car, the 911 GT1 race car. So, you know, anything Porsche introduces into their design or to their design DNA of the 911 does have heritage roots, does hark back to the past. Uh, you only have to look at the new 992 generation and see how the interior and the dash even though it's very high tech now compared to the 911s of the 70s it still is like it it, it is 
it is a reflection of that design. It is a modern interpretation of that design. And I think Porsche is, is, you know, is one of the car companies that does that really, really well. They really do know how to interpret their past shapes, their past designs, and give them a modern twist. And, you know, in years to come, you know, the design DNA of a Porsche is just, is just there. You know, you just see it. Um, and I guess that also comes back to, you know, that also has the negatives negative effect where um, people who don't know much about the 911 say every 911 looks the same. What's the difference? Um, but I think that's what's so good about it. I think Porsche are really, really, their design team and their ever-changing design team is very, very good at instilling that DNA. So what is it about the 996? Uh, you know, I think it's obvious it's obvious the market is changing it's obvious the market is changing um the things about the 996 and i i guess i'll get into the collector side of it in a second and what i've noticed online in the past i guess past six months because i've been thinking about it for actually probably longer than six months probably i've been thinking about it for probably almost the last year um but let's just get into the there are some issues with the 996 uh, and everyone knows about the, the key issue and that's the uh, intermediate shaft. Uh, the immediate shaft bearing issue or the IMS uh, impacts all of their M96 engines um, except for the uh, turbo, the GT2 and the GT3. Um, and this, this IMS issue can uh, cause engine failure. Uh, if it's not addressed. Uh, with the 996, there is a retrofit available. Most people that have a 996 or buy a 996 will retrofit the uh, IMS, this IMS solution because otherwise your engine could blow up and then you are up for a large sum of money. Um, so the IMS on the 996, and this IMS issue did carry over to the 997. Uh, I own a 997.1 Carrera and the 997.1 Carrera um, is has the same issue and there's different bearings depending on the year um, my car is in the engine number range in my 997 where it is not high risk let's just put it it's not that it's never going to happen but it's not a high risk um, the 996 as well when you're looking at buying a 996 when they were introduced in 99 they had a 3.4 liter engine uh, that engine was changed in 2002 with the update to the headlights uh, and it increased to 3.6 liter um, I guess if you're buying one, you have to consider whether you want the first generation, and I guess we'll call the 2002 the second generation. Uh, the IMS issue carried over; it was not rectified. It was it was in all model years of the 996, so it's something that you have to be aware of. Uh, like I said, the GT3, the Turbo, um, the GT2, they did not have that uh, due to the Metzger engine, um, so they were. They were they missed out on that issue. So if you're looking, you want a no hassle, no, uh, hassle free purchase in a 996. I guess you look at the GT3, the Turbo, GT2. But of course, you're paying a lot more money to get into that side of the 996 range. Uh, those variants are obviously a lot more expensive. Um, I guess this podcast, I, would, I just wanted to talk about really buying. And I'm a big fan of the 996 GT3. Uh, I almost bought one. Um, oh. I bought one when the prices were low. Uh, I bought one when the, I would have bought one when the prices were low, and I, I almost bit the bullet on it, and I almost did it, and I didn't, and I, I it's still one of my regrets. We all have car regrets, and uh, I guess that's one of my car regrets: not buying a very low mileage, like a thirty thousand kilometers. I think it had a uh, grey GT3, two only in the country in Australia that were reduced in introduced in Australia, um, and I didn't buy one. Um, and I think at the time it was selling for sub, it was selling for sub a hundred thousand Australian dollars. So let's just say seventy thousand US. Uh, let's just say fifty-five thousand pounds, somewhere like that. Uh, it was a bargain at the time, and I should have bought it. And it wasn't the only one. That was actually one of the higher price ones. There were ones that were lower in price, closer to seventy thousand Australian, which had uh, higher kilometers. So what is happening with the what is happening with the nine nine six at the moment? It seems that the nine nine six has it, it the market is definitely turning it's quite obvious the market is turning um you've only got to look at and i'm going to name the main collector here the, the the person of influence and the person that people look up to in the porsche community it's magnus walker magnus walker uh has so far really in, increased his porsche 996 collection very very quickly he bought a 996 gt3 
Uh, you can you can check out his Instagram. I think he's got photos of it. His 996 GT3, which he customized with decals and things. It looks great. Silver GT3. Um, he recently bought a Guards Red uh, 996 Carrera. I think it's a 999 model. And the other day I noticed that he's just purchased a 996 GT2. Uh, 996 GT2, I have to say I'm a big fan of the 996 GT2 as well. I have been watching a couple of those for sale. They seem to be... And I've been looking at, uh, I'll say that I've been looking at this in the Australian market. Uh, my car is based in Australia, even though I don't live in Australia permanently anymore. Um, but the 996 uh, GT2, it seems to be like a 100,000 gap in prices, depending on what dealer you see it at. And they seem to sit there for quite a long time. I still think it's a really good bargain. I mean, the 996 GT2, I think, is the widow maker, let's call it, is you have to be a good driver to drive it. I don't know whether I'm a good enough driver to extract the potential from the GT2. I'm sure Magnus Walker has the skills to be able to show us how to drive one. He's a very good driver, um, but it's a great uh, it's a great 911 and a great generation of the of the GT2. Um, he's not the only one that I've noticed uh, buying up. If you look on YouTube, there's a channel called Home Built by Jeff. Uh, he's restored a 911 old air-cooled 911 RS or RS replica. Um, he's just bought a 996. Uh, he's bought a 996 and he's starting to do videos on the 996. He bought a silver high kilometer 996 in Australia, quite low price I think. And I think that's where you need to get into the 996 uh, range. If you're going to buy one, you need to buy one at the lower end of the at the lower end of the price range. You need to buy one. I don't think the kilometers are that big a deal. I mean, base it over the, if you're buying one in 2000, it's 20 years ago, you know, it's going to have over 100,000 kilometers. It might have 150,000 kilometers. I think that's okay. Um, but I think it's a great car to, to, to start work, to mod on the first 996, your first 911, I should say. Uh, and it's a good entry level. Um, like I said, I have the 997 and I'm tempted myself to buy a 996. And I've been looking at the 4S for quite a while and I've probably missed the market on it because they were very cheap uh, and now I noticed uh, in Australia for example that the 996 Carrera is selling for about the same price that I was looking at for Carrera 4S's uh, not that long ago um, so the market is changing uh, it is a it is a future classic and I guess the 992 coming out has reinforced this status of it being a classic um, like I said Magnus Walker home boot by Jeff uh, there's another YouTuber as well who has a lot of cars uh, called TGE TV, a younger guy. He's also bought a he bought a blue uh, 996 Carrera 4S a while ago. Uh, I think he's got a really good uh, collector's eye. I think he knows what he's doing uh, with cars and with watches. If you're interested in watches, I'd check out his channel. Um, there's also a few people on Instagram. I noticed yesterday someone else has bought a yellow 4S in the US. I can't think of his name. He collects 993s, and he's just bought a uh, 4S. Um, so I think it, it really is changing, and 996 has become is become a very hot model. And the problem with this is, you know, if you're looking at buying one, when do you do it? And I would say you'd have to do it like now because I think it's just gonna the prices are gonna go crazy. And why are the prices gonna go crazy? Like any any collector's market, any collector's market, uh, the prices are going to go crazy because uh, collectors, dealers, people are going to start buying them up. They're going to start buying them up because they think they can make a profit. They're not necessarily the purists that want to drive them, but they're the people who are buying them so that they can invest in them and make money later on. The same thing that happened with the air-cooled market, where air-cooled 911s, uh, and, and I'll reference Australia back again, in 2004, I remember the I was looking at 3.0 SEs and you know G50 uh, Carreras, and they were sitting somewhere around 30,000 Australian. I think it must have been what 2010, and the prices started to go crazy, and they were selling for mid 100, so 150,000 Australian, 140,000 Australian, like crazy, crazy prices. The craziest one I remember was a a brown turbo. 911. I think it was like an 85, 86 model or something like that. And it was brown with brown interior. I remember this so clearly. And it was at Auto House Hamilton in Australia for sale. And I think, and this is only, this is probably, maybe it's 2004, 2005. And it was selling for 70,000 Australian dollars. 
Seventy thousand Australian dollars. Uh, it's just crazy when you look at the prices now. So I guess then the next thing comes if you're thinking about buying a nine 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 six. What model do you get? Uh, do you get the base Carrera? Of course, there was no Carrera S in the nine nine six. You could get the base Carrera. You could get the Carrera four S, or you could then go to the turbo. I mean, then your other options, like I said, you got the GT three and GT two, but you're paying a lot more money. Even the turbo, which was reasonably affordable is probably out of a lot of people's budget. So I probably would think, I would probably think that it's either the base, or the base or the 4S, sorry, um, the Carrera 4S. Uh, I think it's interesting that Magnus Walker has bought the base. His has got the um, the spoiler and everything like that, the kit on it from Porsche, the factory kit, but he's bought a base. And I think that's the way to go, I really do. Even though I like the 4S, I think, I don't know. I think you buy. I think you buy the base in the nine nine six. Uh, I'm looking at prices last night in Australia. And I think there's somewhere between fifty and sixty thousand Australian dollars. Um, I don't know what the price is in the US or the UK. I haven't checked that out. Uh, but they're about fifty to sixty thousand Australian dollars for better ones. I think there might be one that's slightly cheaper, but for better ones. So I would probably do the base, even though the base probably has the, the lesser power. Um, I probably wouldn't buy the first year of the model. Uh, I'm always conscious of hearing Nick Murray from YouTube. If you haven't seen his channel, check it out. He always talks about Porsches. But Nick Murray always says, never buy the first the first year of a new model. And I think that, that, that rings true. Uh, and like I said, I think Magnus Walker bought a 99. And I think that's about the sweet spot. I mean, you're still going to get the old headlights. But maybe, you know, it's it's a bit like watches and it's a bit like Rolex. If it has something a little bit odd in years to come, that model is actually going to be more sought after. But when you buy a 99, obviously you have less power. You have a 3.4. Of course, there's mods you can change. You can do things to your engine and make it more powerful. There's always plenty of mods to do. Um, but maybe I'd say around 99 99 onwards is probably the, the thing to do. If you'd really, really hate the fried egg headlights, uh, then you'd have to buy a 2002 model. Um, I'm not sure if they updated the interior or anything of the 2002 model, if anything changed. Um, but you do get a 3.6 engine instead of the 3.4. Uh, so I guess you do get a bit of power increase there. Um, I guess they have ironed out some of the issues from the first uh, first few years of production. Like I said, the IMS is still an issue and you still have to do the retrofit uh, to get that issue sorted. Uh, I don't think it's that expensive, um, but it is something you do need to do on the 996. And I think most 996s you buy, uh, people, the owners, if they've been purists and, and Porsche fanatics, they would have already done that retrofit for you. So I think you probably don't even need to worry about it so much. Of course, you know, the, 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 the 4S, uh, the 4S I like, I like because it's got the wide body. But if you don't like the four-wheel drive system and you still want a rear-wheel drive, then you'd have to look at the Turbo or the GT3. Uh, the Turbo, oh, sorry, the Turbo was actually a four-wheel drive. You'd have to look at the uh, GT3 or the GT2, which are both two-wheel drive. Uh, the GT2, like I said, a, a lot more power, a lot more power and only rear-wheel drive. And this is the problem that... Uh, I think when reviews came out at the time about the 996 GT2 is that the amount of power through the rear wheels was just really too hard to control and it was there was a there was a it's very twitchy and at a point you would uh, you would lose control of the car hence its name called the Widowmaker. Uh the GT3 I think you have more control of the power than 996 GT3 but you're going to be paying you know you're going to be paying well at least double for the GT3 and for the based on a standard Carrera and probably four times the amount, almost four times the amount, I'm basing this on Australian prices, four times the amount, three and a half, four times the amount for a GT2. Um, but then again, the body kit, the aerodynamics, the look of them, they are very, very cool. But like I said, if you want to get into the 996 and you want to get a, a very collectible car, which is just going to skyrocket in prices, I think we'll be talking about this in, in 12 months time and we'll be saying, I can't believe that a 996 is now this much money. I think it's going to happen and it's going to happen very quickly and I can see it happening now. It's happening online. If you if you if you are on any social account online, Instagram, Facebook, any of these groups, you can see the chatter. It's happening. Uh, and it's going to happen very quickly and the good models are going to be bought up very very quickly. So I guess, you know, I guess uh, if you want to, is it time to buy a Porsche 996? Yes, it is time to buy a Porsche 996. Uh, I would definitely do it. I would not hesitate. 
and I own a 997, but I think, you know, in the 997, I think I'll, I'll discuss in another podcast because that's that's another comparison. And but I think for the money, you cannot buy uh, you cannot buy 911 at the same price as you can buy a 996. There's nothing really cheaper. Uh, there's nothing really cheaper. You can't get a 997 for 996 prices. 997 prices are increasing, and they're still. Mm, I guess they're still about. 30 percent 30 40 percent higher in australia in australian prices um so yeah i guess you know it's budget dependent do you want a carrera do you want a, a turbo do you want a gt2 do you want a gt3 budget dependent any of those models i think are fine like i said i'm a fan of the 4s i'm not a fan of the four-wheel drive system having a carrera four or four-wheel system on a on a porsche i'd rather just have the two-wheel drive the rear wheel drive but I really do like the Carrera 4S. I liked it when it came out. I remember seeing it and ogling it in uh, Porsche showrooms. I like the fatness, the wide, you know, I like the styling. It's very, it's it's just very like a snapshot snapshot of, of that time. It just looks like Porsche of that era. Um, so I, I would probably be, for myself, I would be tempted 4S and GT3. Even though I like the GT2, it's it's a little bit too expensive, and I would probably buy a 997 GT3 for that price. Which year? Uh, like I said, the year. I think you got to base it on what Magnus Walker's bought. I think he bought a 99. I think anything from 99 onwards, uh, depending on your budget and depending on the condition of the car. Um, maybe it's cool, like I said, to have the fried egg, fried egg original headlights. Maybe that's going to be some feature that collectors are going to want in the future. But I guess if you're buying it to drive and you're buying it because you like it, you have to like it. You have to like what you like. Uh, you know what I mean? And this is the thing about collecting. You know, it doesn't matter what you drive, uh, it will suit you because you are a collector. You're buying it because it, you feel some attraction to it. You have some attraction to it and it shows when you're driving it. But I think that's that's it for the podcast today. Uh, if you have any comments about what 996 you would buy, uh, leave it leave it in the comments. I think you can do that. I'm new to this podcast world, so I'm pretty sure you can still leave comments on, on certain uh, certain sites. Um, but I think it's time to buy a 996. I think it's a great 911, and I think for us Porsche guys, it's, it's something we should be looking at now before the market explodes. Uh, I know I am, uh, and I know I'm tempted to, you know, I know I have a 997, but it's almost tempting to have a 996 as well, and I've been thinking about it. And I'm not going to be one of these people. I can't do what Magnus Walker is doing and have one of each generation. But I kind of like the idea of having a 996. And I think I may uh, I think I may eventually bite the bullet. Hopefully I don't miss out. And hopefully the prices stay stable for a little bit longer. I know I've just contradicted myself. But I know they're going to go up. So that's it for the podcast today. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you like this podcast, I think you can follow me. Please, uh, the more followers, the better. Let me know that you're enjoying these podcasts and I'll talk to you in the next one.